Hey everyone, today I want to talk a little bit about what we use for lighting for our hydroponic systems. The first question to ask is whether you need lighting at all. So when we first started with hydroponics, we thought, hey, let's put our system next to this window and just use the light that comes in from the window to grow our lettuce. So when we tried that, what we found is that there was not nearly enough light. So the lettuce did grow but it grew extremely slowly and it was really long and skinny. So we found just growing next to a window like this doesn't work too well if you really want to grow um, a lot of lettuce. However, I think certain plants, maybe like herbs, would be okay if you just had one row right next to the window and you had a really sunny window facing south probably if you're in the northern hemisphere. Another case where you might not need lighting is if you have a greenhouse. You may still want it in the winter if you want to grow all the way through the winter, especially here where we're farther north. We don't have a whole lot of sun in the winter. But for all other cases, if you want to grow indoors, I would recommend just going ahead and getting a light. So then which light should you buy? One good option and what we started with was T5 fluorescent lighting. So this is a fixture for T5 fluorescence. There's no tubes in it right now, but this one would have six tubes in it. And the nice thing about these is that they're widely available. You can buy them in a lot of different home improvement stores or online, but a lot of people will also have them laying around, or if you've done seed starting, you may already have these. So it can be a low cost initial investment to get into it. The disadvantage of these is that they take more energy than LEDs and they also release more heat than LEDs. It's not terrible. It's There's there's other types of lighting that release a lot more heat than the T5s, but they do release more than LED. And then for setting it up, it's pretty simple. They have hangers on each side of the fixture they are decently heavy, probably 20 pounds or so. So then you'll want to have a strong support structure with something to hang it to up above. We found it's good to have a minimum of two bulbs for every rail that you have. So we have a four rail system here and we found that eight tubes works really well for a four rail system. We've tried to go less than that. And then the plants, especially on the edges, just start to get long and skinny in a slower rate of growth. And then for energy usage, each bulb uses 54 watts. So you can use that to multiply out how much energy the fixture will be using at once. But then to calculate energy usage, you're also going to have to look at how long you have them on for. So we usually leave our lights on for 14 hours a day. So I calculated that in our area, each bulb costs about $2.50 each month to run. So if you have a four tube fixture, that's going to cost you around $10 a month. And then an eight tube fixture would be $20 a month for the T5 fluorescence. Initial cost to buy a fixture like this with the bulbs already in is going to be between $100 and $200 to buy one new and cheaper than that if you can find one used. The next option is LED tube lights. So these are very similar to the T5s. They fit into the same fixture except instead of being a fluorescent light they have a string of LED lights inside of the tube. So these are really nice because you can convert a regular fluorescent fixture into an LED fixture just by switching the tubes. The nice thing about the LED tubes is that they use a lot less energy than the T5 ones do. So the T5, each bulb is 54 watts. Each of these is 24 watts. So you're right about half the energy usage. And we've slowly switched over to these from the T5 tubes 
And as we switched, we found that our yield actually went up a little bit. You can buy these bulbs in different spectrums. This is the sun white spectrum. But there are other ones that you could use as well. This one has worked really well, so I would recommend it. For cost, the initial cost of these is higher. So last I checked, it was $140 for four of the tubes without the fixture. You can also buy them in the fixture. But then the ongoing cost is half. So instead of $2.50 a month for the T5s, it's $1.25 a month. So if you have eight tubes like I have here, then it's $10 a month for us in electricity usage. And we found the same rule applies. You'll want two tubes for each rail that you have. So for a four rail system, I would recommend a minimum of eight tubes. And then for a two rail system, a minimum of four tubes. Another option is to get an LED light that has a panel like this one. A couple of months ago, Mars Hydro offered to send us one for a discount. So I thought, hey, let's see how well it works. And so far, I've been really impressed. So a couple things about this type of light. One thing is that it's a lot smaller. So you can see it's not the full width of, of my system here. Even though it's smaller, it puts out a lot of light and it covers my rail system really well. It's quite a bit lighter as well, so you can hang it a little bit easier than the bigger fixtures for the T5s or the LED tubes. But probably my favorite part about it is that it has a dimmer switch. So here I can turn this, it might be hard to see on the video, but I can change the intensity of the light just by turning a dial. So I like that because then you can adapt it to fit the space that you have or the plants that you're growing. So if you're in a spot where your light's quite a bit higher above the plants, you could turn it up. Or if you're growing a plant that needs more light, you can turn it up as well. So lettuce doesn't require a lot of light compared to other plants. Strawberries can take a little bit more. So you can adjust the lighting depending on what you're growing in the space that you have. Energy usage is pretty similar to the LED tube lights. So this light can go all the way up to 300 watts, but I usually have it on about 60% brightness. So I haven't done an official measurement to see the current draw or anything, but I'm assuming it's going to be about two thirds of the maximum wattage. So that would put it right around 200. And this eight tube fixture also uses around 200 watts. So both of them are about $10 a month each. So it costs me right now $20 a month to light both of my systems. And for initial cost, this light will be more than a fluorescent light, but most likely it's going to be less than the cost of buying a new fixture and eight tube LEDs. So this last I checked was around $270. So then in summary, if you're just starting out and you wanna eliminate costs up front, or if you already have a T5 available, say go with a T5 fixture, or if you have a T5 fixture and you want to make it more efficient, I can definitely recommend these LED tube lights. But if you don't have any lights or any fixtures, and you're just starting out, then I would recommend going straight to the LED panel light because of how easy it is to use, easy it is to hang, and the smaller footprint. So a couple other notes about lighting. For distance above the plants, I found that from the bottom of the light to the top of the rail, using between 16 and 18 inches has worked really well for me. It's a good balance of having the right intensity of light, 
still having room to get in and pull plants out if you need to, but then also not being so close that you're burning the plants. And then for light duration, I go for 14 hours a day. I have a timer that I have the lights on so I don't have to remember to turn it on and off every day. Another thing you may be wondering about is spectrum. There's a lot of technical data up out there about which wavelengths of light are best for which plants. I decided to go with full spectrum, which is light that appears white, kind of similar to sunlight. And the main reason I did that is because this system is in our home, and I didn't want to have a purple glow everywhere in our house. That would drive us nuts. So you don't want to do the purple light. This light is really nice in the home. The light is a nice color. And then the other thing is I've read that full spectrum can work well as a general light. So it can work well for plants like lettuce where you're just doing vegetative growth, but then it can also work for plants like strawberries where you have flowering going on. And the full spectrum has worked really well for us. We've been using it over a year and grown lettuce, herbs, strawberries, several other things, and it's worked well for all of them. I'll put a link in the video description to all three of these lights if you want to go and check them out. I hope you found this video helpful. We have a page on our website that talks a little bit more about lighting. If you want to check that out, I'll also link to that. And we have lots of other information on our website about how to build a system like this. I've also created an online course showing you step-by-step -step how I built these systems and set them up. So if you want more information, go check those out.